base is under nuclear attack. Take cover immediately in your carrier fallout shelter. Repeat, the United States is under nuclear attack. America's Cold War years were filled with fear. Daily radio and newspaper reports blared frightening stories of advancing communism, imminent nuclear war, and Soviet spies. America responded with an all-out offensive against communist infiltration. The growing menace of communism arouses the House of Representatives Un-American Activities Committee. Among the well-informed witnesses testifying is J. Edgar Hoover, head of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Mr. Hoover speaks with authority on the subject. Communism in reality is not a political party. It is a way of life, an evil and malignant way of life. It reveals a condition akin to disease that spreads like an epidemic. And like an epidemic, a quarantine is necessary to keep it from infecting this nation. While Hoover's FBI worked behind the scenes, Congress expanded its own high-profile investigations, often ignoring the civil rights of the accused. Are you or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? I believe I have the right to be confronted with any evidence which supports this question. I should like to see what you have. Oh, well, you would, yes. Yeah. Beginning in 1947, the House Un-American Activities Committee, or HUAC, investigated communist influence in Hollywood. The committee was concerned with the power of movies to persuade audiences with subversive messages. With movie stars and other industry professionals called to testify, the hearings became red carpet events. For the anti-communist witch hunt, it was a publicity bonanza. It is completely uh, against the un-American feeling, this communistic thing. I believe I would, I would move to the state of Texas if it ever came here, because I think the Texans would kill them on sight. <laughs> we have sold them some films. A good many years ago, uh, they bought the Three Little Pigs and used it through Russia. If I had my way about it, they'd all be sent back to Russia or some other unpleasant place. Most witnesses cooperated with the committee. However, a small group who became known as the Hollywood Ten refused to answer questions, citing protection under the First Amendment. Among them, screenwriter John Howard Lawson. The question is, have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? I'm framing my answer in the only way in which any American citizen can frame his then answer you denied, to a question then you, which invades his absolutely invade them. Then you right. deny to, you, you refuse to answer that question. Is that correct? I have told you that I will All right. offer my beliefs, my affiliations, and Here's everything the else the to the American Here's public, and they will know where I stand, as they do from what I have written. Stand away from the stand. I have written for Americanism for many years, and I... Stand away from the stand. Therefore, it is the unanimous opinion of this subcommittee John Howard Lawson is in contempt of Congress. The Hollywood Ten were convicted of contempt and sent to prison. Thousands of others were blacklisted by the studios, forcing many talented movie makers into exile and obscurity. Among the friendly witnesses who testified in 1947 was a B-movie actor named Ronald Reagan. No one could have suspected that four decades later, Reagan would play a leading role in bringing the Cold War to an end. If communists have attempted to inject their propaganda into the motion picture, they have failed miserably. Perhaps Hollywood wasn't influenced by communists, but it was affected by the hearings. Movie studios added to the hysteria by cranking out such anti-communist films as is This Tomorrow, Red Planet Mars, and dozens of others. But tawdry films did little to distract President Truman from what he saw as a perversion of American democracy. Now I'm going to tell you how we're not going to fight communism. We're not going to transform our fine FBI into a Gestapo secret police. We're not going to try to control what our people read and say and think. We're not going to turn the United States into a right-wing totalitarian country in order to deal with a left-wing totalitarian threat. In short, we're not going to end democracy. We're going to keep the Bill of Rights on the books. Against the president's objections, 
Congress passed more dubious legislation, including the Internal Security Bill of 1950, which empowered the government to take action against anyone it deemed a security risk. Truman called it the greatest danger to freedom of speech, press, and assembly since the Alien and Sedition Laws of 1798. 